we are now ready to uh, work on our uh, uh, resource depletion uh, model that we are going to use uh, across uh, uh, these units. And uh, let's gonna start uh, uh, by assuming, by stating uh, explicitly the assumption we are going to make. The first assumption is that we are going to use a single composite good Q. And uh, this Q good can be either consumed or it can be invested. If uh, it is consumed, the good will uh, enhance the consumptions, will increase the well-being of the uh, person living in that moment of time. Well, if it is invested, it will increase the uh, capital stock and hence it will allow greater consumptions, but in the future. And uh, the way this uh, uh, single good is produced is uh, through uh, uh, production functions that uh, uh, use a single index of natural resources, R. So here is an uh, index of uh, the whole amount of natural resources used, and K is this manufactured capital K that derived from the accumulation of Q in the previous years, in the previous moment of time. We will start looking for non-renewable resources, and then we are going to generalize this model to renewable resources. Something to notice is that, uh, again, we here we do not specify the uh, production uh, function. Uh, the form of the production function can be a Cobb-Douglas, constant elasticity of substitutions, or whatever. The results we are going to uh, obtain are pretty uh, gen general. If the optimization of uh, welfare is the objective of our maximization, uh, still, uh, uh, there are a couple of constraints that must be accounted for for any uh, uh, optimal uh, uh, solutions. These constraints take the nature of uh, intertemporal constraints, and this is why we call them equation of, uh, of motion. The first one is of uh, physical nature and uh, link the uh, stock of uh, uh, natural resources with the level of uh, uh, their extractions. And uh, uh, it says that the full amount of uh, uh, natural resources must be used by the end of the time horizon. And uh, we can make these, uh, uh, these uh, assumptions. Uh, we can, in other way, uh, consider this as a constraint because um, any optimal solutions must uh, maximize uh, the welfare, and the welfare depends in a positive way from uh, consumptions, and in turn, consumption depends from a positive way from uh, the usage of natural resources. So it is evident that if we left out uh, some natural resources, this cannot be an optimal solution. All natural resources must be used uh, by the time we end uh, our uh, uh, time reference time uh, for the optimal solution uh, to be optimal. And uh, because uh, uh, our, uh, uh, we are considering non-renewable resources that are available in, uh, in a fixed uh, uh, and fi finite uh, uh, initial quantities, uh, the total use of uh, this resource over time must be equal to the fixed initial stock. And this is also why we are doing our first, uh, uh, we are uh, considering th this, uh, this constraint in, in this way, because if you do not consider this, uh, uh, this limit, uh, we cannot put uh, equal here, but we should, uh, cons we should uh, uh, consider a, a minus uh, sign, and this would uh, uh, complicate uh, uh, the analytical solution that we can find. But So let's, let's consider the fact that uh, uh, all the resources must be used, and so that we can set here 
the sign exactly the sign equal. And uh, this given the fact we call uh, uh, S0 the initial stock available at time zero and uh, R of T the uh, source usage at any point in, in time, we can write uh, this, uh, uh, this equation as the stock of the resources and in at any point of time t must be equal to the initial level of the resource less what less what it has been already extracted from time zero to time t if we take the first derivative with respect of time of the two sides and uh, we use for uh, the derivative with respect to time this uh, notation with uh, the dot over uh, the name of the variable, we end up that the variation of the stock must be equal to uh, the uh, extraction of uh, the results at that moment in time, of course, with a negative sign. The second uh, constraints take instead the form of a constraint over what can uh, be uh, produced. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, the, uh, we are not considering uh, uh, depression, uh, capital depreciations, the variations of uh, uh, the capital is equal to uh, what we add to the capital stock, that is what it is produced less what it is consumed. So everything that is produced and is not consumed go to increase the capital stock. We can a little bit more uh, uh, specific as Q itself, we, we saw in our assumptions being depending from the capital stock and the natural uh, uh, resource, the extraction of the natural resource. So we can rewrote the constraints uh, in, this, uh, in this time. So again, this is another equation of motions because it links the variation in times of a stock resource with the amounts, the flow uh, variables uh, uh, Q and, and, and the consumptions. And again, we notice that we do not need to specify the specific form of the production function. To sum up, uh, our uh, resource depletion model uh, take the form of uh, selecting uh, the choice variable uh, uh, consumption and uh, uh, resource extractions at any given moment in time from now to the infinite in a way that the welfare is uh, maximized and this subject to the two uh, constraints uh, that uh, take the form of these uh, 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 differential equations uh, that we call uh, uh, equations of motions over the stock of natural resources and the stock of capital. This is a dynamic optimization problem and we note that it involves only the first order uh, differential equations. This class of problem can be solved in two ways. The first uh, uh, is the way we are going to show in the next slides using the optimal control uh, theory and uh, uh, this specific fact of this uh, method is that the control is a function of, of, of time. Uh, mathematically, uh, it's relatively simple as it requires only the solution of ordinary differential equations, where the differential equations involve only one uh, independent variables. And uh, give us the, the optimal control theory gives us the first order uh, necessary conditions, but no longer in terms of the original uh, function, but uh, in terms of a new function that we call the Hamiltonian, and it, that it has very strong parallelism with the Lagrangian function, because as the Lagrangian function is made of the original function plus for each constraints the Lagrangian multiply but multiply the constraints in a very similar way we the Hamiltonian is composed of the original function that we want to maximize but we notice here that we don't need to put the integrals plus for each uh, constraints that in this case are equations of, of motion are differential equations are uh, what is called the 
costate variables that represent the equivalent of, um, of the Lagrangian uh, multiplier. There is another way to solve this class of problems that is using the uh, dynamic uh, programming, where the difference is that the controls, instead of being a function of uh, the time itself, is a function of the state at each moment in time you choose that the solutions is uh, given in terms of what you do given uh, the current uh, situations of your, the current state of your model. If you have a uh, deterministic uh, models, the two uh, system uh, are equivalent because at each moment of time you are given states. But uh, when you have uh, stochastic models, you are obliged to, uh, to use the second models. The downside, of course, is that using partial uh, differential equations is a bit harder to, to implement. So this flowchart really show our model in a pretty intuitive uh, way. So on one side, we have the uh, natural, the stock of natural resources. On, and uh, this uh, uh, is uh, the extraction of uh, the natural resources. And uh, when we set an arrow in these uh, terms, we mean a differential identity so that uh, the link between the extraction of natural resources and the stock is a, a differential identity. Conversely, when we have a, a dotted arrow, we imply a, a functions, a functional forms for which we do not necessarily have to write the specific forms. The only things we notice is that the productions depend from uh, uh, is from the extraction of natural resources in a positive way. Production depend also from, uh, from the level, uh, the amount of capital available at that moment in time in a positive way. That is more capital is available, more production output can be uh, made. But also we see that the relationship is in this case is also a differential identity that is what is produced can increase the amount of capital and in general when we've scored box we intend state variables while uh, with uh, this shape uh, we intend flow flow uh, variables production is also an identity with the with consumptions so everything that is produced can be either uh, increase the capital or just simple being cons consumption. So there is no uh, actually difference from this variable consumption and this variable production. They are in our simple uh, model the same uh, the same concept. And increasing the consumptions will increase the utility and in terms. In, uh, finally, will increase the, the welfare. So welfare is our objective functions, and uh, we can uh, try to maximize this welfare by what? By changing these two variables. So this is pretty simple uh, uh, models, but we can see them how can we um, extend this model further and uh, see that uh, even compl complicated models, when we will analyze them uh, through this uh, uh, graphical approach, can become pretty intuitive.